Hello. <laughs> Hello, gorgeous. Lovely to oh, meet you. Thank you. you. Thank you so much for joining us, Noma. You are so beautiful and so talented. Bless you. That was so kind. I'm like, oh my God. So look, I'm just checking. Is the lighting all right? Is it all all right? What's going on here? All right. Okay. Yes. Hello. Yes. Great. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. Oh, fantastic. We can't thank you enough. We are huge fans of HBO's The Undoing. So this is a special, special treat, I have to tell you. Thank you. It's, it's, so it's been a great ride. It's been a great ride. Excellent. Excellent. I'm sure. Before we get into it, I want to make sure that I pronounce your name properly. I will get Noma? you right. Duma Dwini? Nearly. You, do you know what you do it like most people do, which is absolutely perfect. But now, as I'm getting older, I'm going, I'm just going to make you understand the stress, where the stress is. Noma Dumezweni. Ah. Second Noma syllable Dumezweni. stress. Dumezweni. That's it. Beautiful. Thank you. I got you. it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for asking that. That's great. Oh, Thank of you. course. <laughs> we have to pay it respect now. <laughs> Bless, you. Bless you. Okay. So we want to get right into it while we have your time, while we have your ear. You are creating quite the buzz. I mean, for all of the right reasons, right? Yeah. Uh, you star as Haley Fitzgerald. She is a brilliant attorney in HBO's limited series, The Undoing. Huge fan of your performance. Um, and this show is also uh, quickly becoming one of the highest rated series. I know. Yes. Oh, I know. I was like, what? <laughs> I got that news this weekend. What? We're loving it. We are loving it. How does it feel knowing that you have just, you personally have just received this brand new host of fans? I mean, um, we love you. Baby, it's an extra, thank you for saying that. I really appreciate that. And thank you for making this happen. And I was excited. I went, yes, I want to be part of this. <laughs> uh, look, that, 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 I think this is now the little moments one marks in one's life. You go, oh, well, that's a shift. That's a shift into what you dream, what you wish, what you hope, or that's a shift that takes you away from what you thought you wanted. Um, but I would say this is definitely a shift towards what I have possibly dreamed of, but never thought it was actually possible. First and foremost, to be in the room, to be seen for that job, just to audition for that job, and then to get it. I'm sorry, my love, I'm gonna be swearing. And I went, fuck me, I'm, what, I got it, I got it? And then I'm in the room with Nicole Kidman, Hugh Grant, Donald Sutherland, and the rest oh. of the amazing actors, Sophie Grobble, Lily Rabe, Ishmael, Edgar, do you know what I mean? And Michael, it's, it, it's an extraordinary thing to be part of. And then we go, well, we've done the show, to be working with Susanna Beer, because I watched The, um, the Night Manager, I didn't see Bird Box, but I know of her work and I know how, where she started, and this is part of uh, the, the Dogma Collective. You kind of go, that's an extraordinary um, history that you have there, and then the producers. So I always, my big thing is I always shout out everyone I'm working with, because actually none of this stuff happens on my own. So what has happened, I realized in the last week, is that David E. Kelly wrote this character, Haley, Yeah. And I was the lucky bastard who got to play <laughs> Haley. Because seriously, the name Haley Fitzgerald, it can be anybody. It can be any actor. Do you know what I mean? And it, that's, that, that's what the joy is. And I'm the one who got to get that chance. And then you see how people receive her. And I'm like, I did speak to my mentor. I went, I don't know what they're seeing. What are they seeing? What? what is I'm just doing my job. And I mean that with love. And I'm not being, I'm not milk. I'm not being um, uh, self-deprecating. I'm just fascinated. I'm fascinated because I go, okay, well, I'm just telling a story. That's what I saw. Oh, but you just, you do it so well. I mean, it's Thank like you. the character was written for Noma. Like, I can't imagine anybody else in this role. It just oh, wouldn't, God bless you. wouldn't be the same. The story wouldn't even be the same. Well, do you know what? I loved meeting her on the page. And I remember getting, I remember getting the first episode where she doesn't appear. Mm -hmm. But already I was like, I want to know what's going on here. I, I need to find out what the hell is going on here, which is yeah. good. And then I got the sides to read Haley. I went, oh, hello. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. All right. Let's see. And I'm just going to okay. put myself out there. It's just another audition as we all apply for interviews and jobs and what we do. And that's what we do. And then you go, great. They say, come in. We'll videotape you. And then we'll send it off to the directors and the producers. Yeah. And then a week later, I find out I got it. I was like, huh? What? what? 
a week later, wow, this is amazing. Or around that time, do you know what I mean? I was like, that's extraordinary. So, the, I, I, and then you, so look, what I'm saying is, I'm loving that people are loving Hayley. I'm loving seeing all the memes. I'm loving seeing, and I'm like, she, she has some great language. I know as an actor, I went for the language. Mm-hmm. But I, will, I don't have the confidence that Hayley does in terms of her life. Do you know what I mean? That's why I'm an actor. I get to experience different people. Yeah. True. Wow. Well, let me tell you, when I first heard of The Undoing and it was gaining so much popularity, yeah. I, I watched it. And, you know, the first couple of episodes before you appeared, I, 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 was, I was into it, you know, kind of stepped back <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I'm watching it. But let me tell you, the moment you entered the chat, <laughs> the moment you entered the room, yeah. it, it made me perk up. As, you know, I'm like, okay, what is this? You know, oh, this just got you. interesting. You know, I'm <laughs> telling you, it changed the whole tone. Like you... It's oh, interesting because okay, I, I watched... It. We're <laughs> going to get into it, but just quickly, just add into what you said. I remember watching... So episodes one to five, uh, we as actors got episodes one to five a few months ago to have a look at, and it was still being worked on there were still gaps here in uh, editing and stuff like that but just to get a sense of how it was being cut together and I remember episode three going all right okay she's coming and I went oh they filmed that really nicely because I looked at my suit like my hair my loving my hair and I'm like yeah she can meet Grace she can meet Grace oh, yeah. and then that's why I realized people were meeting that energy going who the hell is this person mm-hmm. because we've not seen that person in this world that's right. what it is. And I, I know the first two episodes are setting up the story, ultimately. And what I love is that you do meet characters yeah. as you go along. Yeah. As you go along. And yeah. oh, I just, I could literally, I'm just thinking of questions just coming to my mind. I could chat with people Good. about this all <laughs> night. But for those who have yet to see The Undoing, which, come on, you guys, um, could you talk to us a little bit about the show's premise and then just kind of talk a little bit about your character's dynamic. Right, so it's based on a book and Jean is gonna be very um, disappointed because I can't pronounce her last name properly because I didn't write it down in front of me in prep for this interview. Um, uh, but uh, it's a book called You Should Have Known and what the undoing is adapted from that, but what, it, what the first two episodes of the undoing are picked up from the book because it is about Grace Fraser. Um, in the book, it's Grace Sachs. But it, it, what, I remember reading the book once I got the part, because I was like, well, I've got to find out what I'm going to be doing. And Hayley does not appear in the book at all. She's not there. And yeah, and that's when I remember going, oh, this is a genius piece of adaptation. Because what David E. Kelly wrote, okay, this is where we have our foundation. Now where can we jump right. off? that foundation and in the book it's all from grace's point of view every conversation every moment is always from her point of view that's why i find it extraordinary um and you know the answer quite early on in the beginning i kind of really don't want to give spoilers in this but i know some people have and some people haven't if that's yeah. okay um but then the, the the premise is a murder happens this world that this one woman grace fraser that's that's our protagonist um that's our heroine that's like okay what's this world that she's in and it's a very elevated money-fied world and of course nicole plays it beautiful with that gorgeous red oh, hair yeah, and, the, yes. <laughs> I know, and, like, and the coats and the amazing coats um but it's about this woman's world being discombobulated because a murder happens, one of the other school moms who is economically not in the same space as she is, um, is murdered. And then we find out a few things about Grace's life and how it's attached to that woman's life that she had no idea. And her husband, played by Hugh Grant, who, by the way, I think they're all amazing actors, but I watched episode six for the first time on Sunday. I was like, Hugh, what yeah. the hell? You're amazing. Yeah, he, they're he, amazing. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, oh, you yeah. all gave. I mean, you all gave stellar performances. Each Thank of you, baby. Each of you. Um, your character. I mean, as we have basically gabs about this entire time, was so well received that fans are wanting a spinoff solely based on Haley Fitzgerald. I know. Isn't what does that, that say? Crazy? What does that say? That does. That, because, okay, I'm one of the few people who hasn't seen How to Get Away with Murder. 
Um, and I remember the series starting when I was doing a play in London. I was like, okay, I can't watch that now because I think I don't want it to affect what I'm doing. Because I, I love when great actors do things. I like to put it into myself. But at this point, I was like, no, no, I'm going to wait for that. And I still haven't seen it. And then, but I watched Scandal and I've, I've caught these memes going with um, Annalise, with Olivia, and now with Hayley. And I think there is something, what I don't realise, okay. Sherilyn Ifill, I thought I was pronouncing her name wrong, NAACP lawyer extraordinaire woman, yeah. um, tweeted that she loved Hayley. She understood Hayley, she understood the side eye, she understood the suits. I was like, ah, oh, right, so... Oh, wow. That's another version of a black woman that we have not seen. Mm -hmm. And we're coming to meet her in her world. We have loads of version. And that's what we have to all, you and I, as yeah. black people, have to say to other people, we're not a monolith. We're not all exactly the same. What? Yes, we have. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we have coincidences. Yes, we have intuitions. Yes, we have meetings. And we have far apart. So what was lovely for me was the idea that Hayley has now joined this extraordinary group of women who are bull bust, bull busters, who change the world and make things happen, who don't give a shit. I mean, it was interesting yeah. finally watching Hayley's journey because I think there was a humbling in episode six. So if it was going to go on to another idea, I love the idea of it. I'm not interested, to be honest. I'm like, I'm now onto the next job that I do. We made this in June of last year and everyone's met oh, it at yeah. this moment. So, but I, I love that people love her. Wow. That's well, what I look, love. We, yeah. it, we would absolutely love to see you. <laughs> I know you're on to the next thing, but if it ever does come back around, I love oh that. my goodness, we yeah, were but, ready for it. But you know, David E. Kelly would have to uh, to to write it, and Susanna B. would have to do the very first episode, if not the the, the whole of the series, just to set that up. You kind of go, these are the things that would have to be in place, and then you go, but the story's already done. Jean's book was the start of the point of, of the book. David took it somewhere else, and then what Nicole and Susanna and all the producers did was make this great piece of TV entertainment. And it has been an entertainment for the last six weeks with HBO. And so you go, what would that be? And somebody on Twitter did say, oh, maybe we meet Hayley again and we meet a whole new family and a whole new world. And that's how you do it. You go, I was like, okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. That, that seems very realistic. Yes. That's also very realistic. So that's where you go, well, that, who are the writers? Who are there? And you would, I, I'd go, you'd have to have loads of different representation of writers. That's what we have to do in the next thing. But look, this is me dreaming along with you, but I'm going, going, I'm good. I'm just very happy that people loved that and people loved her. All right. Well, I know who I need to talk to then to make <laughs> happen. I, I want to make this happen. I really do. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Noma, there is a very memorable scene. Yeah. I think if you're really watching The Undoing and you're, you're a fan, uh, especially of Haley. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the very first, when she meets Grace, when she meets Grace. Yes. Um, and she describes exactly for Grace, her client, what it is she could provide. Yeah. Um, and what that was, she described as muck. <laughs> and we went crazy over that. I mean, the way <laughs> Haley broke it down, honey, I mean, we lost it. I loved it. I was like, well, you muck it up, girl. You better muck Yes. It. Muckety muck muck. That's my name. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So can you share with us what your interpretation of muck really is and what Haley meant by that? So what I know for myself what muck really is, is what she says in uh, as part of that speech, which is I'm putting the burden of proof on the law. We don't know what the reality is. I don't know whether it's uh, guilty or innocent. That doesn't matter. But in terms of the law, that's what I can give you. And she says very early, he's a liar. She says to Grace, he's a liar. The, the, the papers, this doesn't hold up. And then Grace goes, but can you do it? I said, look, what I can do is give you mug. I can mess up the case. I can, I can be like an old cartoon running around making, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? That's what Hayley does. She uses the law because this was what the, the, the only way I could really understand therefore enjoy explaining Haley since it's come out is that she loves her work she is brilliant at her job that's why she's in this company you know this is elite shit going on there's money in these rooms that she's working in 
And she is there for her mind. She is there for her, her analytical, uh, analytical basis of how to use the law. And it is, that's the muck I can create. I can say to the law, well, look, you said this. So what she does with the police officer, and what she does with um, Fernando Alves, played by the gorgeous Ishmael and uh, Edgar beforehand, she, she's good at language. She listens to language. She enjoys to go, where am I going to pick, unpick that or pick that? And that's what I love about her play, her play with language with the people in front of her. Absolutely. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you. So about briefly, you now join the gambit of black women who have starred as powerful, successful attorneys yeah. at law. Uh, uh, you mentioned uh, Olivia from Scandal yeah. or Annalise Keaton. Um, did this role speak to you, particularly because of what it represented? Okay, this is the big thing is that I'm a British citizen, black British actress. I've grown up many of them. My family's South African. Yeah. I get a part where I get to play an African American woman. There's huge power in that. And look, I'm an actor. We just want to play the parts. I understand the dialogue about who is the African American actress who gets the parts or doesn't get the parts. And I remember thinking to myself, I've got to honor this. I've got to speak to the African-American girlfriends that I have and say, look, okay, just, just to, as, a, as a, look, what do you think? Well, how can we play this? Not play, the playing of her, but I know when I have to honor you because the truth is, and I keep, it's a, it's a weird thing which has come up in terms of my realization of how the world moves, especially post George Floyd, is that we as black people, around the world, the diaspora, we understand what racism is. We understand what the ups and downs of that in every different culture that we're growing up with. But what the majority of black people, and this is why blackness is not a monolith, um, the majority of black people do not understand is that I do not understand the African American history. I, I, I know it intellectually, yeah. but what I do not understand is experientially, emotionally, ancestral, your ancestors. Because it hit me post George Floyd, I went, oh, that's the difference. We are not, oh my God, yes, I'm black, but I don't know what it is to be African-American. So the taking of the part of Haley, I was very um, aware that I was representing. So what I was representing was the research and knowledge. I did just as a joy of an actor, was I found out about a woman called Flo, Flo, Florence Kennedy, Flo Kennedy, who was a lawyer, who went to Columbia, who sued Columbia to get her into the class because they didn't want to take her in as a black woman. But because she went, no, 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 I can be in this space. You're using, yeah. It's racism. So you go, the history is there for me to understand. So therefore, my family's South African. I understand what apartheid is. Um, I understand why they left that country in 69 when I, or, 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 therefore I was born on the way but it's still not the African-American experience. And we have to honor that. We all have to honor that. It's, it, it's singular. So to play Haley and understand that, so I went to meet this wonderful woman called Carol Mason via a lovely friend motel, um, who is the president of John Jay uh, uh, College, University. I never know what, because I, I didn't do higher education, so I never know what the big names are for the colleges, but John Jay. But she's a black woman who's a lawyer. She may not be a uh, prosecution or, or, or defense, but she knows this world. And to see a black woman in that space and to talk to her about her history, I went, okay, that's great, that's great, that's great. And then I met a white man called Jim Walden, who is a lawyer, was a prosecution or a defense lawyer. He's got his own practice downtown. That was amazing. Um, so you, I honor, that's all I could do is honor what I understood of this African-American woman. I know I've gone all the way around the houses, but you know what I mean. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I love the way you broke that down for us. I mean, thank you. And, and, and it, it comes down to exactly what you said. You represented. And absolutely. Yeah, you represented and you yeah. did phenomenally. I mean, you may not understand experimentally the African American experience, but as an African American woman watching you, yeah. I felt represented. I felt. And that's where my gratitude is. I know it sounds odd, but I, guys, forgive me, but I, I realized on Twitter. I've been following these African-American women for a long time yeah. who are extraordinary and who've just risen up, especially in these last nine months of what's happening in the world. And the fact that they know who I am now because of Haley, I'm like, shut up! <laughs> 
I'm so excited. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, oh my God. And this is my Twitter especially. And also Instagram. But we, we are, look, it's, we're all human. Yeah. We all have experiences. But to honor each other's experience, diversity, representation is so important. I remember saying to somebody, a world full of daisies is the only plant. Daisies are there and they're beautiful. But if they were the only plant in the whole world, yeah. what, we wouldn't be able to appreciate it. Exactly. Where's the joy in that? I need the difference. I need to see the difference and my experience to be out there. So that was what I loved finding out as an actor. Wow. Okay. So let's talk about this. You delivered. I know we keep, we keep going back here, but man, it's just, <laughs> you have to just bear repeating. I mean, you delivered such a phenomenal performance. Thank you. Your presence commanded each scene that you were a part of. And I actually saw someone in the comments say the same thing, like your presence in each scene, it dominated, you know what yeah. I mean? You were a force. Were you at all intimidated working alongside oh. of Nicole Kidman, who's an Oscar winner, or Hugh Grant, who's Golden Globe winner? I mean, what was that like? <laughs> I'm human. Of yeah. course I was. Of course I was. And I will, I'm going to admit this right now for the very first time. Because it's all worked out beautifully and it's all wonderful. But there was a moment in my, um, I, second, I think it was second or third day of work, um, actual filming work on the show, that I thought I was going to be fired. I was convinced I was going to be fired. Nothing to do with them. Nothing to do with them. It's about where I went in my head. Because I was like, yeah, because it's like, that, that's Nicole Kidman, that's Hugh Grant, and that's Susanna Beer. Okay, this is a different day, this is a different day. And I just, there was just a moment when I just, I, yeah, you know those moments you just slow down yeah. and you're not present. You're not present. My head took over, my fears took over that I was not good enough. And I remember telling my agent and my manager, going home that night, freaking out that I think they're about to fire me because I had heard stories of um, actors in America who started a job and then they were fired along the way. Mm -hmm. It wasn't them at all, it was all my own fear. What they were there to do, actually, Susanna and the producers go, how can we help you get comfortable? How can we wow. help you get comfortable? And it was dialogue coach, it was time learning language, because I just uh, done theatre, so I take a long time, not a long time, but I, I take a different route of learning language. What that taught me was with TV, have your language and your thoughts ready before the very first rehearsal when it comes to TV in the morning, because I like rehearsals with people, and then I kind of go, that's, but that's not what you do on TV. Um, oh my darling, I forgot what the question was. What was the question? <laughs> we were just talking about your experience working alongside Nicole oh. Hitman. And so with, yeah, and I did get nervous. There was one particular day, and it's interesting, we were watching it with my daughter, and I said, that was the day I got scared, Quiva. She was like, I would not have known. I God bless her. Because I have to share this thing. I think it's really important yeah. to be transparent about how you're feeling. This is not, it all looks shiny. All this world looks shiny, but we're all doing the best that we can and the work that we can. And, um, and I was in awe of them. I, I was going, I'm a theatre kid. You guys are film stars. You're fil the, all the language that we put on people, that's not them. I get to know Nicole and Hugh, and they're good people. They're good humans who are brilliant at what they do. And I remember that 24 hours when I was terrified and then things shifted. And then there was a moment I went, suck it up, names. Suck it up. It was actually my ex, father of my child. Because I remember going home that night, going, I think I'm not good enough. And he went, and I, I said, who was in the job and what, because he's not that interested in that stuff. I was like, who's working? And he'd seen Bird Box that Susanna had directed. And he went, you're working with her? Yeah. Oh, Noma. Oh, Noma, step up your game, he said. Step up your game. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was the best thing that could have happened to me. It was the best thing. Because you realize there's support now. People know that you can do it. And There's all the people are ramming you, I could do it. And then there's a point you've got to get out of your head mm -hmm. and be in the room and do your job. And that's what my love was. Wow. And I saw someone say this in the comment section, and mm. I absolutely agree. That was a lesson. You oh. shot some serious gems right there. Baby, ever since then, I always go, it was a learning. I always say it was a learning curve. Mm -hmm. 
But mm-hmm. now this is the first time I've admitted that that's what was one of the things that was going through me, yeah. is the fact that I know I grew exponentially in terms of how I can work and what my work can be because of the support of that company where I looked at it as going, <gasps> they were going, no, we chose you. You're in the room. Just relax, chill. But mm-hmm. I was doing all these uh, puzzle pieces, which were not real, if that makes sense. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. So but it was a learning. Always take a learning. Always take a learning. Every job. Every For job. Sure. And I love what you said, that they chose you. They wanted you. So they know yeah. what you're capable of. You know, you just can't. You got to get out of your head sometimes. Exactly. Absolutely. And that's, it's the realization that they knew I could do it. I just had to meet them. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Love. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So let's switch gears here just a little bit and let's talk about some of your theater performances. So you have been part of quite a few, actually, um, from A Raisin in the Sun to, uh, yes, London. I'm a theater London. baby. I'm a theater baby. And that's what's part of the fear that came through doing that as well. Because I've yes. just done three years of theater on Harry Potter and the Cursed Child playing Hermione Jean Granger, which yeah. is amazing. And that's changed my world, that production. That's why I was able to go up for the audition for The Undoing. And that's why I'm sitting in front of you right now. Hey. And you know, when you see hey. all this stuff, that was Look a thing. Out. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Look at God. Look, Look at, at God. him. Come on, do it. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's like, oh, wow. That's why I, I, I love theatre. But that's also part of, I was doing theatre. And then the week, I finished on the Sunday. After three years, we all, there's seven of us, the whole company, but seven of us had gone from London to New York on Broadway. Amazing. And then I finished on the Sunday. We finished the show on the Sunday. The new company started the next week. And I started filming The Undoing on the Friday. So I was like that. I was playing acting on TV. And people yeah. were going, oh, no, too much, too much. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but I love theater. I love theater, yeah. <laughs> what would you say, or how would you say the art of theater compares to the art of television? Um, let, let's put it this way. Theater is the one that I know. And both of them have got their own fear spaces. That both of them have got their own ways of learning things. And I've been doing theater for 25 years now professionally. And I now know how that works. I know what backstage is. I know what the publicity is i know the directors are the producers are in but that wasn't there it, it just incrementally teaching moments as it happens and then tv has only started a few recently i've done tiny little bits here and there and then there was a gap between doing um uh, the west end a production of um, harry potter and the cursed child and broadway and i had a seven month gap and in that time i made black earth rising Mary Poppins Returns, um, The Kid Who Would Be King, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, these wonderful little pieces for me to practice. And Black Earth Rising, which I'm so proud of, it's with um, Michaela Cole, but uh, a genius director called Hugo Blake. Um, Google, Google guys, Google, um, (laughs) is your friend. Um, And that was a great experience, which I I realized led me to this experience. It's so different, it's so different. Literally, the theater is this, and TV's right there. And that's it. I'm literally looking going, that's the learning curve. That's the learning curve. And every job, it gets easier. Mm-hmm. Who knows? But yeah. I also know that some people who've done TV and film, the idea of doing theatre is terrifying. And I kind of get it. I kind of I understand why it's terrifying. But it's all, look, it's practice. It's practice. Darling, I got to have the chance to have this opportunity yeah. And especially as black creatives in this world, the art of practice. It's a thing that Violet Davis said a few years ago. We just want the opportunity. And I was given a great opportunity. And luckily, I had people around me saying, you can step up into this. Do it. Come on. Oh, you got it. You got Thank it. you. Um, as previously mentioned, um, as we just spoke about, you started as Hermione Granger um at, in the in london's adaptation of harry potter now this was a huge moment for yeah. a lot of us harry potter fans including myself um you know to see hermione represented by a woman of color and there you go again represented. <laughs> i think that's the way the world is going to be for me i'm very happy to be part of that hey. yes. <laughs> <laughs> did you realize this role would mean so much to so many and How did you handle some of the backlash, you know, I feel like that came from those who used to see Hermione as a black woman? 
I mean, what was lovely about that experience is that I'd been, a year before it was announced, I was one of quite a few people who were doing different workshops around the show. And when I say workshops, you just go and do for a reading and then next week, maybe let's go and work as, as in the next session. Let's go and work with movement with Stephen Hoggett to see how the cloaks do and what magic we can create with movement and, uh, uh, and cloth. Christina Jones, um, uh, Christine Jones working on the set and design. Um, uh, a costume, uh, amazing uh, people. I, it, basically, I'm working with amazing people. Yeah. It's just a workshop. I'm not going to get the part. I'm just here to serve what's needed. Could you read Hermione? Yes, I'd be happy to. Because obviously they're going to give it to someone younger. They're going to give it to someone more likely mixed race heritage. They're going to give it to someone, uh, oh, blah, 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 blah. All the things that were not me is what they're going to do. If they're going to, if they're going to go uh, the route of someone of color. I get the job. I get the job after a four week workshop. And at the end of the, the reading is there. Um, JK is there in the reading and all these amazing people, every department is there. We all as a company have fun. But there were about five or six of us who did all those uh, workshops together. And because I was the one as a black woman who got to play Hermione and was given yeah. the amazing opportunity to play Hermione. People were like, what? <laughs> 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 this does not compute. Yes. Um, I was lucky because I was like, you know what? I don't need to worry about other people. I, I'd look, as a grown woman, I knew people have an opinion. I knew people would have an opinion. What I didn't realize was how big those voices and those opinions were going to be. So I always joke that um, at that point in 2016, when the news was announced, from 2012 to 2016, I, on Twitter, I had cultivated through my theatre work um, uh, about 1,200 people uh, across four years following me because of the theatre work I did. That night, the news broke out. It changed to double, triple that by the end of the morning. You know, I went, okay, so, okay, right, that, yeah, okay, I don't understand that. In the same way, The Undoing has just done that for me again. I mean, it hasn't doubled, triple, but the exponential growth uh, of people following because of Hayley Fitzgerald. I, it's always fascinating, that moment, um, uh, to watch what that, means but what I knew is that I was protected all I knew is that I'm an actor I love my company we are here telling a story I knew the producers were there for me I think there was only one time when we we're in previews um I always remember this and I read this you know like kind of ego surfing yeah I did an ego surf okay um and then I was like yes and then I saw somebody and it was a young woman and a young uh European woman, uh, White had put down, oh yes, Nemo de Mez when he goes off stage to, eat, uh, to collect the bananas. I go, that, that? The who? Yeah, that, 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 yeah. I don't, the I, 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 I know what you're saying, but I don't think you should be saying, and that was the first one I went, <gasps> you fuck, excuse me, <laughs> you fuck. All right, and then I, I remember sitting there and I'm showing the dressing room with Poppy Miller, the gorgeous Poppy Miller who played Ginny. And she'd popped out. I was just sitting there going, shall I press the answer? Shall I press the answer? Oh, fuck it. I can always take it off. I pressed. And I remember my body going, ah, well done. I've done it. Mm -hmm. one, of, one of the things with me as an actor, I always really try and listen to my body before my head comes in. Um, and then within half an hour of that, the uh, publicity team said, it's all right, we've got to sort it out. At the theatre, I was like, well, yeah, we saw it. We've got it. We've, we've got it taken down. I was like, "Rah, okay." We've got good people around me, so yeah. it was interesting because it was racist yeah. as f, and it was what it was. But I'm just doing a job, and actually, that I and I remember saying at the time, the people's lack of imagination was what was showing and telling in those moments. Which yeah. is that is fascinating to me every time, and I'm so glad that you every time, every time, every time, it's always surprising. It's always surprising. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a story that you're telling. Essentially, mm. it's it's all about imagination. That's it. And let's and, and, and as other people said, this is a world of magic, and you can't see black people in in the magic world. I mean, <laughs> let's not go into. But it's basically that's what it boils down to. That's Absolutely. what it boils down to. Was, yeah, and it was fascinating for that. Um, oh. But I was safe. I was safe. I was looked after. Great company, and that's why I could enjoy it. 
I could really enjoy it. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, are you currently planning on returning to the stage anytime soon? Oh my God, when the time is right. I mean, the world right now, because of COVID, because of lock-ins, I mean, the biggest heartbreak is the world of theatre. And it is really weird in the realisation that I know that my life has changed because of TV, because of the undoing, and in terms of the possibilities that I now have, mm -hmm. um, have shifted and expanded. But all those friends, like the stage managers, the front of house crew, the ushers, backstage, stage doors. And I now know that they're thinking Broadway's autumn 2021. It seems similar for um, uh, Britain as well. And of course, it's worldwide. And I'm talking about these two extraordinary places of theatre, especially Britain. It's right. tough, man. It's tough. It's tough. And there's no support of the arts, which drives me insane crazy it drives me insane it drives me insane because it's without the art we can't heal you do you know what i mean i can't I, I that's what we're here for we're here for yeah but we're here for you to realize that you're not on your own you're not on your own that's what's um that's our privilege as actors and storytellers and i also i'm, I'm more of a storyteller than i am an actor if that makes sense but i'm all of it um, but every component is that I can't do this on my own. The person who does the follow spotlight is I am, I need them as much as they need me to do that work. So, because we need to trust each other. It's all about trust. And the fact that people are not being looked after as, uh, freelancers, as self-employed, as, 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 because, oh, don't, I could go on about this for ages. I could go on for about that, but we need to give thanks to the people because that's what creativity is. We take yeah. risks. We take risks. For sure. I love what you yeah. said there. Without art, we can't heal you. I love that. Oh. That should be on a shirt. <laughs> that should be like okay, good. I'll remember that. Thank you. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> that is so that. But it's true. Yeah, but it we know big. that. Art is healing. We know that from our own experiences growing up. We do know that. Absolutely. Um, what is the best piece of advice that you <clears throat> still carry with you to this day? Um, or I I should say, what is the best piece of advice you've been given as an actress that you still carry with you to this day? Okay, I, and I use it, and this is a, a great I, I always talk about. It is um, my mentor, Tony, who I met when I was 25 and he was 57, and I'm over 50 now. And he, he is now 84. And we talk literally every week. And we've just been talking about what I'm doing, and it's funny because he's in England, and I'm, what's that? What do you think? And we'll still get notes and stuff like that. But years ago, I always say, to, I, I, I did say to him, Tony, you know, I always say the same thing. It's the best piece of advice which he was taught by a teacher at drama school. I didn't do drama school. I was very lucky that I met Tony, who mentored me and said, no, you don't have to do drama school, but you're going to have to do a lot of practice and get out there and do whatever learning that you can. And it was a, a note that he got from a teacher, which I think is so brilliant for everyone in this job especially on theatre, but also think about it just internally. Yeah. Wherever you are is the centre of the stage. I don't care what part you are, Ooh. who you play, wherever you are is the centre of the stage. If you are in your character, if you're in your space, you're here to, you could be the maid or the waiter listening on the lead actors. Me as an audience member, if I don't quite understand what's going on with those leads, I'm going right. to look at you to find, figure out if you're listening to understand what your opinion is. And I know it sounds really interesting, but it's a very, um, it gives you power as a character. Mm -hmm. Because therefore, the individual of Noma, just say this is the character, Noma standing uh, in the room, um, uh, say a restaurant, and someone is observing the restaurant, even in film, even in film, it's like, no, let's put it even in storytelling, just put it in whatever the storytelling formula is, is that I as an audience member goes, well, that's a human saying that, but what does that human think? And you as the actor are going, I'm going to embody this human right now and be present in this moment. I'm going, yeah, I believe in them. I don't believe in them, but you will feel what I'm feeling. So you're yeah. there for wherever you are at the center of the stage. It's a great note to play for you to come. Let's go back down into the story. That is, that is powerful. That, that, <laughs> that, 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 I could tell that you really carry that advice with you. And I yeah. think that is why 
you dominate the scenes that you were a part of because you you know in the back of your mind that it's this is your center right now that you are center stage yeah. and, and it emanates for your human life the story of you you are the center of your life and everybody. everything around that do you know what i mean your mom your dad is the center of their life and you're the players around it so if you can understand that, my daughter who's 13 and it's, it's both of us here. And I go, well, I'm sending my life, that's the center of her life, but I am the satellite around her life. Let's understand how we can tell stories. I get very um, romantic about it. I get very romantic about it, yeah. Wow. Oh, that is so powerful. <laughs> We're loving this. Thanks, baby. <laughs> Thank you, I'm enjoying this. Thank you. Absolutely. So are you currently working on or promoting any new passion projects of your own? I've just, no, I look forward to the passion projects of my own and it's all about dreaming. We're going to come back to that in a minute because I'm just, again, in a, another romantic thought, but I've just had a lovely experience finishing off the job I was doing, which got stopped um, uh, during lockdown. Mm -hmm. And it's called Made for Love, HBO Max coming out and glorious Kristen Milioti. Um, Billy Magnuson, Dan Bakadal, Caleb Foote, amazing, gorgeous actors, and the great Ray Romano, who I have no scenes with whatsoever, is in it as well. Um, and it's going to be coming out next year. So we just finished doing that. And that was lovely to catch up with everybody after six months. And we had reshoots and rewrites. So it's all kind of a big adventure. My daughter came to me with, uh, to LA for the very first time but she was doing five o'clock online schooling because she was like doing New York time. It was like, oh, you're knackered, but she did well. Um, so that I'm really looking forward to because um, the creators, the directors, the showrunners, and DOP and camera guys, their vision. I'm so curious what it looks like. It's one oh. of those. I can't wait for you to see. I just, I'm so curious what it looks it's like. It's me excited. I can't wait. Yeah, no, it's going to be really lovely. It's going to be really lovely. So, but now it's like, just wait and see. Let's enjoy Christmas. Let's hibernate. Let's be with those we love or let's be with ourselves and be kind to ourselves and just relax, man. Just relax because the end of 2020 is upon us. We made it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's, you know, it's, it's, I'm so grateful. Yeah. I'm so thankful that we made it, you know, but oh, it was wow. here because a lot of us didn't. A lot of us lost. Yeah, a lot of us didn't. Of us lost so yeah. much. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm laughing because, again, if that is extraordinary because we have to give thanks to that and gratitude for this moment. We also have to acknowledge it's been painful for a lot of people and worldwide. But the, I do get, that's what I was, I was about to say, I do get romantic about what is possible post- mm -hmm pandemic how that opens up post george floyd's death murder what we as black people in the diaspora and people of color i mean uh east asian south asian and um, indigenous peoples around the world i think we have to acknowledge that there are no excuses anymore to be made there are no um i don't need to make people feel comfortable anymore and that's happened in this moment in time for me. I'm very good at making people feel very comfortable before we get into something. Yeah. But now it really doesn't matter what you think. Let's mm. just have a conversation. Let's just be, let's create. And I will challenge you and you are welcome to challenge me, but I know that it really doesn't matter. Let's do the best that we can. Let's do the best that we can. Oh, yeah. Up. Yeah. Yeah. I love you, Noma. Oh, you're, you're so a delight. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. And I'm finally now following you guys. Thank you so much. Because I love what you're doing. I, I love everything about you. It's great. Thank you. Uh, you're fantastic. We've had such a wonderful time. You all tuning in, please make sure you do a couple of things. Make sure that you uh, follow Noma um on you know, yeah yeah where no but why don't you tell us where can we follow you I on all you. social media platforms well i always keep thinking every month i go i'm gonna get off i'm gonna get off social media i'm gonna get off social media but on twitter and instagram i am known as miss Dumezweni. um that's that's what i can give you you can google it look there's my name fall down there you're right you're right you're right you're right just do it <laughs> Um, I really appreciate you and this time. Thank you, my darling. It's been really lovely. Thank you. Thank you.
so much. We hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. You guys, make sure you're following Noma. Please make sure you tune in to HBO and check out The Undoing so yeah. that you can uh, yeah. bear with and, and I love it because some people are going, what? What the hell? And I'm yeah. going, yes. And that's the kind of storytelling I love because yeah. you get people riled up. You get people, uh, you get people present. You get yes. people present. Yeah. Some more presence in the world. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we love chatting with you. We love you guys for tuning in. Make sure you're following Black Cinema now. And yes. you can follow me over at H Wood Gems. And until next time, we'll see you next time, Noma. Thanks, darling. Lovely to meet you. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye, you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>